Hey everyone, it's Susan Pierce Thompson and welcome to the Wednesday vlog. I am excited to be with you and today I'm going to answer a question that Carol wrote in. She says, hi Susan, I would like it if you could talk about the theory that says that when someone goes on a diet, the body puts itself in a panic mode of being afraid of starvation and stores fat with every bite you give it to protect itself, creating what is known as the yo-yo effect of dieting. Thanks so much, Carol, a new Bright Lifer. Well, that's a great question, Carol. Um, so, um, my guess is that that theory dates back to something called the Minnesota Starvation Experiment, which was done at the University of Minnesota back in 1994 to 1995, uh, right after World War II. Um, in order to study, the purpose was to study the effects of starvation and also how to most effectively rehabilitate people who had been starving. So the idea was all throughout the world, because of World War II, people had uh, been starving um, dramatically and there was fear because, um, you know, roads were damaged and rations were scarce and stuff that people would continue to starve. And the question was, how could we bo best help uh, the millions of people who were starving and how could we best rehabilitate and refeed people who had undergone extreme starvation. So what they did at the University of Minnesota was they put out a call for uh, volunteers to participate in this study. 200 people volunteered and 36 were carefully chosen. These were all men. They were completely normal weight men and the the experiment had several phases. So the first phase was 12 weeks long. So for about three months, they monitored these men in their natural environment. They didn't starve them yet. So they just took lots and lots of recordings and got baseline measurements on each of these men individually. Then there was a 24 week, which 24 weeks is almost half a year. It's about five and a half months. There was a 24 week starvation period where each of these men was carefully fed. Now, the, the diets averaged about 1,500 calories a day, but they differed from man to man because the goal was to shrink them down so that they lost about 25% of their body weight. Um, so, you know, what's 25% of their body weight? Now, here, I'm going to force myself to do math on the fly. So if they had been 200 pounds, they would get down to 150 pounds. Okay, I think that's right. All right, so um, in order to do that, it wasn't a one size fits all thing and they actually created like a fat loss curve and they fit each man to their own personal curve each week and if one man hadn't lost enough weight in a given week, their calories would be adjusted for that week, et cetera. It was very individualized. Basically, they, they starved these men down for about six months. Then there was a period of rehabilitation, of refeeding. And um, it took them a while to get all the results published. They were published in uh, a book in 1950. By that point, it was a little too late to help all the people who had been starving after World War II, but um, a pamphlet was published right, right after the study ended. And actually the findings, the preliminary findings in that pamphlet were used to help people who had been starving around the world. So basically, here's what they found in the Minnesota starvation experiment. They found that starving dramatically affects you. Um, these men who had been red-blooded men who used to have pin-up pictures of girls in bathing suits on their walls, um, somewhere in the middle of this study started taking down those pin-up pictures of women and started putting up pictures of hamburgers on the wall, hamburgers and french fries. They started dreaming about food. They started spending their time looking through recipe books and cookbooks. Some of them started to fantasize about later in their life being chefs or going into the food industry in some way. There was lots of preoccupation with food. There was also a lot of depression and what they called hysteria, um, which today we probably wouldn't call it hysteria, but lots of mental disorders of all sorts of kinds started to erupt. Social withdrawal and isolation started to be very common. Sex drive plummeted. There were all kinds of effects that were documented. Now, Interestingly, and this is something that's not often talked about, but I think my Brightline Eating community would be very interested to hear this, the diets that these men were fed in their whatever, roughly 1,500 calories a day, consisted of foods that were assumed to be typically available in post-war Europe, and they consisted of bread, potatoes, 
turnips, and macaroni. That's what these men were fed, bread, potatoes, turnips, and macaroni for 1,500 calories a day. The absolute worst thing that you could feed somebody if you're wondering about their cravings and I mean you know you know the science of what I talk about right if you're brand new to bright line eating and you don't you got to watch some other vlogs and but anyway you probably have a sense of how eating bread potatoes turnips and macaroni is not a good diet if you know you're wondering about how to reduce cravings and so forth so no wonder these men were going out of their minds it's not like they were fed you know, salad and broccoli and salmon for 1,500 calories a day, oatmeal and flax seeds and apples. No, they were bread, fed bread, potatoes, and macaroni. So anyway, um, from, but this was the definitive study. So, you know, after this study was done, I mean, I don't think it could be done again in a different way because the IRB, the Institutional Research Board, would not allow it to be done. Every college or university today, but not in 1950, has a board that decides on the ethics of running a study with human subjects or animal subjects. And uh, boards don't approve research that harms human beings. So this is exactly the kind of study that got done before those ethics boards existed and probably would not be able to be done today. So. This study is assumed to be just the definitive study of what happens when you calorically restrict a human being, and that's the sort of conclusions people have drawn. Now, what I want to say, Carol, is we know a little bit about what happens in the body when you restrict calories, if you do it the right way, through bright line eating. We've got a research study going on here. We have the Institute for Sustainable Weight Loss that's been established. We are busy, busy, busy studying what happens when you study caloric deprivation and you do it the right way. In bright line eating, we do restrict people's calories so that they lose their weight, they lose it fast, and then once they've lost all their excess weight, we add back in food so that they don't lose weight anymore. And here's what I would say about the differences between what we see and what they saw in the Minnesota starvation experiment. I would say that it is typical that you see a heightened level of obsession with food and um, perhaps some anxiety and I don't know about depression. Depression typically lifts with bright line eating, but um, it takes a lot of willpower to establish the habits of a new way of eating. And when your willpower is depleted through trying to establish these new habits, all kinds of new habits, new habits about what you're eating for breakfast, new habits of, I ask people to try to meditate in the morning, um, all of these new habits, do a nightly checklist sheet at night. There's all kinds of things that I'm asking people to do, um, changing with their food and in other things too, other ways too. When you're trying to change all those habits, it depletes your willpower and then one thing we see in the willpower research is that when your willpower is depleted, it feels like the volume on life has been turned up a little bit, which means that frustrations frustrate you more, um, injustices make you angrier, loud sounds annoy you more, traffic frustrates you more, that kind of thing. So we do see in the first two, three months of Bright Line Eating, people responding as if they're edgy, you know, like it's just hard, they're sensitive, overly sensitive, because they're changing so much in their lives. And I say that we do also see, not for everybody, but for some people, increased obsession with food for a period of time. Now this ultimately goes away, but what we don't see is the body not allowing them to lose weight. In the vast, 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 vast majority of cases, people lose their excess weight and then are able to keep it off through the habits that they've established in Bright Line Eating. So I do not support the notion that when you restrict your food intake, your body fights you at every turn and holds on to every pound. That's not what we see. Um, there are, however, some effects of restricting caloric intake not necessarily all the effects that they saw in the Minnesota starvation study, because again, those men were eating bread, pasta, turnips, and macaroni. God bless them, oh my goodness. Um, but in bright line eating, um, we do see some of the, some similar effects. So anyway, I hope you found that interesting, Carol. It's a great question. Um, 
And yeah, those are my thoughts. So um, if you're new to this channel, go ahead and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Scroll down and give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Let me know what you thought of this, whatever your opinion is. I don't mind, I just wanna hear it. Leave me, leave me a comment. And then if you have a question that you want me to respond to, go ahead and write it in. I'm at Susan at brightlineeating.com. Have a great week, everyone. I'll see you next Wednesday.